Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another racing video. We're going to be chatting about the ancient art of defensive driving. Yeah, 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 okay, might not be as interesting as, you know, the sexiest moves out on there, but the, the, the best defensive drivers are some of the most skilled drivers out there because they can read the game. Talk about players in football, etc., having loads of time to think about what's going on around them, and they always look like they're so comfortable. Good defensive drivers have the same thing. They can read the game so well, and that's what makes them so difficult to pass. We're here today at Carl Army and Aston Martin. It's a random sim, sim grid daily race, and Sean Arnold is in the car next to us. Big shout out to Sean. Um, if you're not in our Discord, then join in the link below, because me and Sean run this together. Um, it's it's a great place to come and chat and, and learn things as, as well as sort of get stuck in, so come and join there. And let's start the race. Bit of a slow start from me just slightly caught out by the start and Sean's on the left of us here you can't quite see him in the rear view mirror we've got a car to the right of us as well and we actually get a little bit of a tap just while we're all figuring out what's going on Sean's still on our inside there so we have to give him room okay so we're immediately thinking are we ahead we're going to stick on our line and we now we can see him in our rear view mirror okay so immediately we're on the back foot because we know Sean's going to be super quick he's He's a, he's a quicker driver than me, it's it's not up for debate, it's just, just a fact of life, I've accepted it. Sean, congrats, well done. We're both in the aggressive preset setups, just thought we'd go in one day as I run really wide there. You know, Sean's already thinking in his mind, that's under pressure here. Okay, we, we need to capitalise on this early stage of the race before I start to get a little bit more comfortable with my rhythm and, and we start to get into a into a sort of groove of, of what each other are doing and learning what's going on there. So there are two different ways to attack, two different ways to defend. The first one, you know, you guys have seen on the stream, Dave Skills, he's a big fan of surprising people with an overtaking move. As soon as you get up behind them, that's the time to make the move. As soon as you settle into that rhythm, which is what Sean's trying to avoid here, that's really when, when it gets, you know, it starts to play more and more into the hands of the defensive driver, okay? So we're just starting to feel each other out here. We're coming to the end of the first lap. We've already made one big mistake. Make sure you don't hit the sausage curb on the inside, even if you run a little bit wide there. You know, we're just, just starting to feel our way into the race. Tire pressures are up. And, and we're just starting to, to get into our rhythm. Short, less than a second behind at this point. The, the camera makes it look quite far behind. Really, he's, he's sort of 0.3 or 4 behind at this stage. And what Sean's going to be doing is to start looking at my driving, going, hmm, OK, he's breaking there at this point in this track. He's taking this line through here. You know, he's going on the curb on the right-hand side. Tends to take a slightly wider line into this left-hander. Nice and early on the power. Sean tried to cut in there a little bit more and got on that curb a little bit. She's trying to put me off. While on the flip side of things, I'm just trying to settle into my rhythm at this point in the race, okay? I'm trying to forget as much as I can about Sean and what he's, you know, equally trying to put that mental pressure on me. I need to get that out of my brain and start focusing on the road ahead, okay? It's rare that you get a whole you know, section of road ahead of you, even when you're leading, you're usually coming up through back markers and all of all of that kind of stuff. So it's it's rare to get that whole sort of clean road ahead. So we're just trying to hit our brake markers. And this is really a tip on sort of how to lead a race really at this stage is to settle into your rhythm. You don't have to push too hard. That's not what it's about. Once you're in this sort of second or third lap that, you know, everything's up to pressure, you're going to be able to get away with a few more things. But it's really about hitting your brake markers and, and letting the car behind make, make the mistakes. You need to not think about them. It's all about you at this stage. Later in the race, Sean's going to get really close up behind us and it's going to change the focus of my driving. We're not dropping him, even though we've got this, this sort of thought process in our mind and I go on a lot about this is is what your mindset should be in different stages of the race and I, I go on about it a lot and I'm not necessarily very good at doing it as we miss the apex massively into turn one and that's allowed Sean to come back at us 0.3 of a second at this stage 
and now he can he can you know smell the meat it's really it, this is we're in his his sort of grasp now it's it's it, it's really his time to now pull up to the back of us and we're now under that pressure and it's incredible how quickly that momentum shift can happen in a race one mistake and then the car behind can can you know smell that fear almost and it starts to hunt you down and that compounds in in your mindset as we miss the apex again they're a little bit fast through there have to get out of the throttle uh, in the middle of that section although we tend to get quite a good exit there you know, these heavy braking zones you can see already sean closing up massively in there so part of our defensive mindset we're just trying to learn what sean's good at in the same car same condition same fuel load and immediately we can see that on the big stop so into turn one we'll see again this lap into this corner as well you can see that sean's much more confident on the brakes sean's a great driver he's got good equipment as well i'm not saying that is the reason at all but he's going to be more confident on those brakes than us even into this last corner as well you can you can tell he can just carry that little bit more apex speed than we can into there so we're starting to build up this picture of what sean's like as an attacking driver and it's a little bit offset because we're mates and you know this is just a fun daily sim grid race but we're still racing hard and i miss the apex again so this is that point where i'm I'm trying a little bit too hard because I feel like I should be driving away because I'm in the lead and Sean's got that Porsche in third place just to think about it a little bit but you can see through those tighter corners where trail braking is really key Sean's stronger than us it's it's again it's not up for debate it's like the overall pacing that's where Sean's gaining his time potentially we're slightly stronger coming out of the corners we have a slightly different style where I'll sort of go a little bit wider on, on corner entry um, and then cut back slightly more to get a cleaner exit and Sean's much faster through that corner entry phase but still manages to get that that exit speed okay um, and Sean makes a slight mistake there just in the middle of the kink through the, the chicane through there but it's this sort of corner here where we're starting to look at our mirrors where we weren't before especially when uh, as we run wide Sean again with that blue livery with the green strip we're starting to notice things that are playing on our mind that we didn't at the start of the race like oh you know that neon strip at the front of Sean's car that wasn't there to start with or we didn't think about that before and again it's the concertina effect but under that heavy braking it feels like sean is just stronger okay so what do we what do we do to try and um ensure that we keep this position because we're pretty status quo on pace but it's clear that you know if we make a mistake then sean's going to be right there to capitalize so we've got two options all right we can either start to back sean into the Porsche in third place and and that's risky for a number of reasons because um well a he may just overtake us because um you know that's how uh, we miss the apex again on the first corner it's a huge theme and sean's closer than he has been for a number of laps see if we can get a good drive off this left hand onto the sort of middle of straight sean takes a similar line to us and again we get that drive off which is nice and clean gives us a little bit of leeway through the next section it's it's risky backing sean up into the porsche behind because you don't know what their pace is going to be you don't know if the porsche is on their absolute limit at the minute whether they've got you know even things like not enough fuel where their head is at at the minute so you, you can't do that and, and obviously you're at risk of just being overtaken and then the race is, is gone against someone like Sean as he goes a little bit too deep in there. So the other thing we can do is we can start to position our car in frustrating positions for Sean, okay? So we've identified, and the first stage of this is identifying where Sean is strong. So we need to try and hinder him on those areas where he is stronger than us, so in those heavy braking zones. So. You know, the, the cynical driver in me would be starting to leave it slightly longer until we get onto onto the power coming out the corners you know take a slightly different line under braking just so he has to think about things a little bit more and we almost hit the kink then and we have to massively get out of the, uh, the throttle and, and the steering angle that we had on there and this is Sean's opportunity here we get a good run out but so does Sean he's going to be in our draft here it's 0 0.1 of a second the camera really doesn't do it justice he is right behind us at this stage and closing in the, in the draft and this is where we need to make a call do we go for the inside do we defend do we try and hit the marker on that 100 meter board so you see us slightly more defensive than I would have been normally there 
after just taking a slightly inside line just to make sure just to cover off it it wasn't extreme where we were breaking on the inside of the corner it was still taking our line but just drifting across a little bit harder than we would usually and what that actually meant is we we couldn't get on the throttle as early but that upset sean's rhythm a little bit because he couldn't get on the power when he wanted to so there's again there's that sort of reverse concertina effect where we were able to pull out a little bit of time on Sean and we live to fight another day and it's those small movements those nuances which make the difference between a defensive driver seem aggressive and slightly more passive and and I would definitely say that I fall into the the second one sometimes there's a don't get me wrong there's a there's a place and a time for aggressive defense depending on race circumstances who you're racing against if you know them all that sort of thing right but now we know Sean, we know he's not going to go for too many silly moves. We just need to make sure that we're starting to be a little bit more clever with our car positioning, just breaking slightly on the inside of the line. Because if he's going to go for a move then, he he really, really needs to go for that move. And I'm not talking about a huge dive bomb. I'm talking about absolutely nailing a breaking point. Because otherwise, you know, we're either, we are either going to crash or, or he's going to be compromised on, on the corner and somehow we're going to sneak back through. So we've been in this race for a few laps now. We're in our rhythm. It's kind of status quo, isn't it? We're, we're, we're sort of getting to know each other still on the racetrack. We know Sean's quicker into this first braking zone. It's almost like he's got a, you know, a slightly better braking you know, pad. He doesn't, but it's almost like he just had a couple of percent you know, extra braking and we run wide here really really wide short and that's that's where we're upsetting the car behind rhythm as we we play a little bit of silly billies um and we're just on the inside here there isn't really anywhere for sean to overtake here as he goes out wide uh, so we stay out wide sean goes to the outside into this right hander we can't see him we need to leave him room we stay on the inside he's on that curb and you could just see him in the rearview mirror he's got nowhere to go here in fact he's in a really poor position where he's just able to cut back in but any any further forward than he was there then he, he really would have been a struggle because he I, I would have hung him up to dry during that chicane but again this is his opportunity we give him a bit of room but we just cover off that inside in the way that he can't take his line so that wasn't a hard aggressive move over to the left hand side of the track that was a oh i'm still here i'm still here i'm still here yeah okay i'm, I'm still in front and i'm gonna take my line now type of move okay so it doesn't need to be a big swing across the track to try and scythe the nose off of the car behind it's just a, a slight yeah, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create some uncertainty in the car behind us we both go a little bit wide there but sean more so than than me you're trying to create that uncertainty in their mind so they that they just have to think about where they're going to make their move a little bit more and what that does it's a knock-on effect and it, it gets them to question oh am i strong into the first corner breaking zone here you know if i start breaking on that 100 meter board am i am i gonna am i gonna pass matt you know it doesn't i haven't passed matt for the last four or five laps doing that so it's, it you know it starts to get them thinking about what it is they're doing and where the opportunities to pass are, are going to be in and, and and right now we seem to have it you know pretty covered off it's it's just moving the car along in the middle of the circuit hitting those apexes making sure we're starting to to you know concentrate on hitting those braking points because if we do that you know we're, we're both quick drivers it's not as if the i mean sean's definitely faster but it's not as if the pace difference is enough to make it that it, you know if we if make but no mistakes he's just going to drive past yeah so it's not like we have that massive offset that's going to be super easy for sean to come through and at this point sean's going to be starting to get a little bit frustrated again they're just trying to upset his rhythm a little bit breaking slightly early it does leave us a little bit vulnerable coming down here into the left kink which is flat and this is where we need to make a decision do we go for the inside here which we do and we sort of force sean to the outside we actually miss our breaking point a little bit this is going to leave us vulnerable on the inside and sean's through so that was all from maybe trying to be a little bit too clever okay sean's line was compromised there because we kept our foot in it so he's going to take the inside here we're going to cut back as much as we can get a straighter exit as possible and we're going to sit under this rear wing for as long as we can to see if we can try and get a move done into turn one um, and this is where we have the opportunity what i was talking about on 
you know, you either do it now or you have to find a way in five or ten laps time to get the pass done. So Sean's got past us. We've got back past him immediately by nailing that braking under the element of surprise almost because he doesn't know what to expect. Um, in football, they talk about when you're vulnerable after you've just scored a goal and that's exactly the same thing when you've passed someone is you need to change your mindset to then looking forward but if you don't cover off the next corner or the next couple of corners once you've passed someone then you're you're vulnerable to that that repeat sort of reverse attack from the car behind and that's exactly what we did there is we took everything that we learned from watching Sean in the mirror and, and we flipped it on its head and we turned it into attack. Where does Sean like to attack? What's Sean good at? Let's, let's play that back to him and, and say, well, yeah, hang on a minute. I can do that too, right? And it wasn't a dirty move. He came across to, to cover us and we went a little bit further. And then oh, as we run wide going into the, the kink, um, yeah, it wasn't a dirty move. He came across to cover. Brilliant. And we just went a little bit further. And we left Sean a decision. And this is where that psychological side of things comes from is, is we, we make him make that decision and whichever way he chooses we, we react to him we're ready to react to whichever way it is again trying to overdrive now we've turned our attention to the front uh, we're trying to get away because we know that we're going to be vulnerable we were vulnerable at this point last lap we were still behind Sean okay so it's a mindset it's a game not just because we're on on the game but it's it's a it's a psychological warfare when you're trying to overtake someone okay so you're you're finding out where and what they're good at when you're defensive driving defensively driving you're using that information to position your car in ways which is going to upset their rhythm and that's the main message for me to get across to you if you take nothing else from this video from watching us drive and duel through this Kyle Army race in just aggressive presets in the Aston um, it, the one thing I'd say is is learn what your opposition is doing. It's a mindset game. It's a mental game. Your brain controls everything, and 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 that's really the key to defensive driving is adjusting your movements slightly so they're not aggressive, but to the point where they're just off putting the car behind and it leaves that little bit of uncertainty in their mind so they know that you're not going to do exactly the same thing so they can you know, go for that dive bomb that lap maybe change your lineup slightly going into the next corner just take a slightly inside line not to the point where it's going to compromise you too much but you know don't go all the way out to the left hand side here you know, just take a slightly defensive line it's things like that which people don't think about when they're defensively driving and it's it's really really key to to sort of start considering that when you're driving okay so the car behind is going to be getting frustrated. They're going to think that they're coming through, and you need to you need to kind of coerce them into thinking like that more and more. You need to be the catalyst for them to make mistakes, and and you're going to do that by by changing your lineup and being inconsistent. Because there's nothing better than when you're attacking is when you've got someone in front of you who's doing the same thing every lap. Because you know exactly what move you're going to make. Then you can plan. You can test out your braking zone on one lap and then you know put it into practice in the next one. So it's it's exactly what you you know it's exactly what you want if you're an attacking player and exactly what you don't want if you're a defensively positioned driver. Okay, and and when you're driving like this, it's possible to keep someone behind you for ages. You know, Sean's got pretty close to us, but because we just upset that rhythm, where he's stronger in the track, we just wait slightly on on that apex on the on the throttle just to get a clean power out and he's sort of a little bit i'm going to oh we're going to hit the back of him here you know, just that split second is enough to give you that leeway to survive the next three corners and that's really when it gets down to taking things corner by corner that's when you know you're really under pressure okay and what i'd advise until someone gets within you know half a second of you you don't think like that at all You've got to think forward still, and you've got to try and avoid looking at them too much. When it's this sort of range, when it's right on it, and there's a race win on the line, that's when you start to implement those strategies, like I just did there, taking that slightly inside line. Okay? So it's all a mindset thing. We come to the close of this race. It's been an, it's been an epic duel. There's not been a whole load of overtakes, but we've been within a second the whole race. We've watched Sean close up to us. We've made mistakes. Sean's made mistakes. And it's been it's been all about the mental game here. 
um, using the same setup in the same conditions and and it, it's so refreshing to have a, a great race because so many people when they defend or they attack are over aggressive and you've been there I've been there taken out lap one lap ten whatever it may be where someone has just been overzealous gone for a move which you know they haven't planned out and that don't get me wrong that plays into one of the you know surprise attacks the two thoughts of overtaking would be the surprise attack or you you build up your picture of them and then make a concerted effort to then over you know apply pressure and then overtake but it's really you know it's it's really frustrating when people get taken out you get taken out and and there's two halves to every story some of that is how how you attack and Sean's really starting to apply pressure now notice how we've dropped the Porsche in third completely even when we've been battling with each other as he's super strong on the brakes there although runs a little bit wide so he's compromised exit coming out of him you know it's it there's every there's two sides to every story so you need to look at your attacking and your defensive qualities in both of those situations and think well actually if I was attacking there what would I do and if I was defending there what would I do and if, if the two marry up then you know there's there's something to think about there so as we run a little bit wide break at the 50 meter board see if we can get a good exit on this final corner get a good run out Sean running a little bit wide there not many laps left in this race and Sean's really getting to the stage where he's starting to put pressure on me and himself to 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 you know we're gonna we're gonna we're going to make a mistake. It's it's inevitable. It's just whether Sean is there as we run a little bit wide. Sean doesn't. He's right there now, right on our tail, less than point one of a second behind. Click the curb, run over to the right hand side. See if we can get a good exit here. All about getting the nose in. A little bit hesitant on the throttle, and we go wide again. Sean closing up slightly. This is the crucial stage of of the race. All of this is to hit our apexes, okay? Now what we need to think is, right, brake slightly after the 50 meter board, down into second gear, get that turning point, nice and smooth on the power, run out onto the curb, now stay onto the left, uh, the right hand side, brake just after the curb starts, get it nice turned in, nice and patient through the, in, uh, the middle of this corner, get it, carry some good speed, don't be overzealous there, it's all about carrying momentum and we've we've earned ourselves a little bit of breathing room before another one of Sean's really strong areas of the track which is one of those heavy braking zones as we know so as long as we can keep pulling out those little mini wins on the sections just before where Sean is strong then we're absolutely great again this sort of corner you can see Sean's really starting to get a bit frustrated now braking deeper uh, we, we're still on our on our line there and Sean's lost a lot of ground there just from that little bit of you know, frustration that little bit of oh, maybe I should try and make the move here and across into the final corner um, see if we can get a nice clean run out on for another lap come to the end of the race very soon and, and Sean's really lost that ground now and, and this is it's a different challenge when you're at this stage in the race where you've you've earned your position and this is what I'm talking about is you take it for granted you stop thinking about other things you think you're free and you stop concentrating on what you're doing and I'm guilty of it you've just seen it I've run wide on the first corner again which seems to be a bit of a theme and and what you need to do when you're in this position when you've you've done your defensive driving you've earned your position you've you've stopped their attack they aren't coming through anymore is you need to concentrate and hit those brake markers once you start hitting brake markers everything else will start to flow and that's again a massive tip for defensive driving is that positioning comes from knowing exactly where your brake markers are and and for those of you who are at the stage where you're you're still learning tracks or, or learning braking markers or zones then I would urge you to get to the point where you know a track where you can you know, visualize, okay, turn one, I'm gonna break at the 100 meter board, then I'm gonna go, you know, clip the curb on the right hand side, then I'm gonna turn in at this point, you know, through here, we've got the boards on the left hand side after this kink, you need to know exactly where to break. There's this first board here, now we break. So it's, it's knowing the track in the level of detail that you need to not just drive round and do hot laps, but when you're slightly offline, knowing, you know, just breaking a little bit earlier, 
and, and knowing where the, the outskirts of the track and knowing where the limit of the car is. And it's all about knowing exactly what's what, okay? So that's the biggest thing. That's where people let themselves down is when they start to break. When they're either attacking or, or defending, they break at the same point as if there were no other cars on the track. And I'm sure you've experienced it. I've sort of done it as well. I've definitely done it. As I've, I've no shame in saying that I've made mistakes like that. Sean's really close behind us. And again, he's taking that inside line and we're, we're trying to, to just position our car so we get that great exit coming up onto the straight sections because we know Sean's really, really good on these trail break situa situations. Um, um, and we're thinking now at this point, you know, there's not many laps left. We've come to the end of the race. We've just got to hit these braking points, get a clean exit, get a good exit. Sean's really piling on that pressure by using his advantage under the braking, under trail braking, so he can carry more speed into that apex, but sort of almost just scaring us off the road, right? But it's about positioning ourselves nicely, nice and calmly. We've earned that breathing room into this braking zone like we should have, brake before the kerb slightly wide but not too bad again Sean really quick on entry but we get a great run out the corner it's a contrast in driving styles which has worked really well for us and this is the last lap of the race so three corners remaining hit our breaking point bam there it is Sean nice and steady on this one he's going for an attack on the last corner we're really cautious point two behind now please don't hit the kink please don't hit the kink nice give it a big leeway don't run too far out wide and all we need to do is hit our breaking point for the final corner and away we go to take the victory what a great race guys i hope that gave you a bit of an insight into what i'm thinking as i'm driving you know, defensively against someone like sean who's a great attacker and and very fast i cannot understate how quick sean is and although this was just a fun race at the end of the day i was i was really quite happy at the end of this to see the porsche line up for third if you're not subbed to the channel do so there's a discord link below as well um more content like this more telemetry more tuning more track guides on the way till next time see you then